Hey everybody, Adam with Fanic here. Uh, wanted to drop a little video today uh, to discuss the topic of using offsets, uh, frame offsets and tool offsets in your code and how that can help you be more efficient, cleaner code, fewer top points, uh, more modular code, all the good things that good programmers need to know. Um, in honor of St. Patty's Day, Today is uh, St. Patrick's Day 2021. Uh, I've opted to use the FANUC CR7 Collaborative Robot. Uh, great for all your fenceless applications, bump stop safety, and uh, why not a green drink tray that uh, maybe after this video is filled with uh, some green pints of beer. So let's, let's dive in a little bit and uh, talk about, first of all, how to use them, where to use them, and then we're going to play around a little bit. So, so bear with me. Um, some good stuff will come at the end, too, and uh, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments at the end. So here's uh, our collaborative robot, like I mentioned. I've got a pointer with a uh, user tool set, which is close enough for me. Don't worry about those types of things in RoboGuide. Um, so we're going we're gonna to dive in. Let's create a program. Create, um, we'll have some fun, we'll call it Patties in honor of, of the day today. All right, uh, first thing I like to do is throw in a bunch of lines of code uh, just so I can move around and be a little more modular there. Um, for this robot, I'm gonna be teaching everything in world. I'm not gonna take the time to set up a user frame here like I should. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just going to use it in world for today. So you can see X, Y, Z positive coordinates. Uh, and then my tool I already did set up. You can see X, Y, Z there. So first lines of code that every good programmer should be doing. I'm using world frame. I'm using my tool frame number one that I've taught. Um, and let's also set some speed. We'll set our speed limitation here. Um, I want this robot to move somewhat slowly. I'm not gonna mess with payload in this program. Cobots play a little bit different with payload and I don't wanna do payload changes now that I have this one set up and it's happy. Um, that could be another topic for another time. So here we go. Let's start by uh, defining a couple positions. Let's say where this robot is right now is a good home position. It's a valid home. Shift, record, position has been recorded. Life is good. Um, oh, I had some data in there from a previous test. All right. So next, um, you know, I let's let's say I want to go down and, and get something in this tray. All right. I want to point in that tray. Uh, for those that are you watching here, I'm holding Control and Shift key. And while I hold Control Shift, the robot chases my mouse. I've been getting some questions on that. So let's call this, uh, I'm just going to call it tray one, like the tray first slot. That makes sense. Shift, record, position has been recorded. Now, I want to build an offset. Uh, to do that, and, and let me show you here if you're not familiar, of course I can look at where that tool is in space by clicking on position. I can see where that tool is, X, Y, Z, yaw, pitch, and roll. Uh, my configuration, everything's good. A position register doesn't have to be a position. It can just be numerical data that we use to modify positions. And that's what we call offsets just numbers that are going to modify that. So I'm going to just name this guy offset for right now. And let's go in here to the positional data. You can see that it starts off all asterisks. There's no data in there. I'm going to start real simple to start, and then we're going to build on what we've learned. I'm going to say 0 and x, 0 and y. I'm going to say 100 millimeters z. Zero yaw, zero pitch, zero roll. So now, PR3, uh, this isn't actually a position that you'd be able to go to. In fact, if you tried to move the robot to zero, zero, 100, zero, 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 it would be somewhere down here, and the robot cannot achieve that. You'd actually get a warning. 
But what we can do with this when we treat it slightly differently is really powerful. So I'm going to click the Done key, and you can see that it goes from being an asterisk to being an R, meaning it's recorded. Let's write some code. Let's, um, let's get a starting position. Um, we'll move linear to PR number one, which is home. So we're going to start at home. And then let's do a continuous. Let's say we want to go PR one, 100, 25. Now, here's where I like to have some fun. Let's say I want to move to the track. I am going to take this line of code, copy, select and copy it, and I'm going to say paste, logic, paste, logic. And I'm going to move down again, paste, logic. Helps me program a lot speedier this way. I can highlight that guy and say, you're going back home at the end. So now I've got that. So I'm going to start and end at my home position. And in the middle, I have tray, 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 which is right now not very useful. I will change this to a fine. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is choice. And you can see all of these options, all of these positional modifiers, all these great things that I can be doing with the robot, with, with logic, with I.O., with timing, with conditionals, all these different things that I can be doing uh, as part of that line of code. Uh, the first one I'm going to teach you guys about is offset PR. And when I put that there, look what it does uh, natively. Uh, it amends line 7. So now line 7 is, is twice as long. 5, 6, 7, 7 continued, and then 8. And it has this. I'm going to assign the data in 3 to that. So now what I've got, and you can see that it's commenting itself, I'm telling the robot to move to the tray with the offset data that's in data 3. And uh, what the robot is going to do here is it is going to do simple addition. Uh, this line of code is always adding. Uh, if you want negative, which I'll show you later, uh, we'll make a negative value in there, but it's adding. So I'm going to take whatever is in tray 2 and do just a matrix addition of what is in 3. So if I take what's in tray 1 and I add nothing in the X, nothing in the Y, but I add 100 in the Z, and then nothing anywhere else, start visualizing in your head where this robot's actually going to go. It's going to go, remember my world coordinates here, X is this guy, Y is this way, Z is this way. If I add 100 millimeters in the Z, that robot should be about there, 100 millimeters above my tray. So what I've done is I've created an approach point by adding an offset to my top point. And I'm going to do that here as well. Offset PR3. So now the way my code reads is really slick. I start at home. I go above the tray position. Then I go down to the tray position. And this is fine because I want to stop moving. Maybe there's a grip or actuation or a dispense or whatever. And then I go back above the tray. Now, this is beneficial versus having uh, position two is above the tray, then position three would be the tray, and then position four is your retreat, because now you'd have all these extra top points in there. What if we needed to touch up where it is on the tray? Right now, PR2 is in the middle of the tray. If I moved PR2 over a little bit, so instead of being here, if I moved it over, all of these offsets that I'm using are going to be relative to that. Rather than some absolute point in space, they're relative. So let's play this, let's play this code real quick uh, and, and, and show you. Uh, let me get this robot back at home real quick. And we'll show you what this is, what this is going to look like. Here we go. Uh, bring this down a little bit. Reset. And... Robot heads to my offset, then down, then up, and back home. 
that whole program, which is starting to be suitable for a pick and place, is taught with two positions. That robot went to an approach, went to a part, went to a retreat, and went home with two taught positions. And like I said, right now it was going down here. If I wanted my PR2 to be over there, all I have to do is shift record. PR2 is now over there. Let's rerun this bad boy. Get this guy, get this guy back at my uh, home, home position. So now you notice that instead of being here, I've taught my PR2 over there. Let's run again. You'll notice how the approach point stays perfectly vertical, perfectly up and down compared to where I need to pick. So now you have this really clean code that no matter what you're doing to modify or clean up or adjust or change your program, everything else goes along with it. Awesome. Yay. Let's go to the next topic. Uh, let me remove these just by clicking no option. Okay, just highlight it, choice, no option. So now we're back to this, there's no offsets. Let me go back into choice. You'll notice on this first one we used offset PR. There is also tool offset PR. Hmm, let's play with that. Tool offset PR, let's put in PR3, why not? Tool offset. PR3, why not? Before I click play and, and, and we run this thing, I want you to just take a moment, maybe pause the video and think about what's going to be different. And here's your hint. When I did a regular offset, look at where my triad is, X, Y, and Z. All right, I'm going to rotate that around. Look where my X, Y, and Z is. Tool offset, look at my X, Y, and Z. What does that tell you? Let's uh, play this and see if what you think is going to happen is what's going to happen. Oh, in this case, we actually got an error. Position not reachable. That even surprised me. Let's, uh, let's make this something a little bit more uh, friendly here. Record. And let's try again. So let's start at our home position. All right, let's see if this one shows us what we want to show. Here we go. All right. Here the robot goes into our offset, into our offset. Oh, no. We crashed into the tray. Oh, we crashed again. And you just cost your company $5,000 and four weeks lead time. Okay, so what happened, guys? If you look, you, the, the, the robot literally drove through the part. Well, that's because... We have an offset of Z is positive 100, and my tool, Z, is facing down. Look at where the plus Z is. It shows right here on the screen, plus Z. So I'm adding 100 down instead of adding 100 up. And you're thinking, oh, well, then what the heck's the point of that, Adam? Why are we doing such a thing? Well, let's, let's, let's calm your horses here. Uh, there's a couple good uses for this, and there's a couple fixes if you want to leave it alone. If I wanted to leave it alone, here's the simplest thing I can do. Neg 100. Done. Flip the polarity. Run the program. Above my tray. 100 millimeters to the tray. 100 millimeters up. Go home. Fixed. Done. No more crashing. No more angry bosses. Um, the other thing we could have done, we could have left that alone, okay, and we could have in, uh, inverted our tool frame. So in my tooling data, uh, you can see that right now my tool is just straight down, 0, 0, 1, 25, 0. That's just where my tool is. If I wanted to, I could take my yaw and flip it 180 degrees, apply. Now look at my tool. Now my tool, X, Y, Z, you can see that my Z is facing upwards. 
So um, that would also make the end result positive Z, positive Z, everything's going up. But let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about why FANUC defaults uh, to being this way. And I'll give you a little example. What if I didn't need to come straight down and pick and place something out of this tray? What if maybe I needed to weld or dispense or do something in the corner of the tray? Look at this robot position here. We're going to, we're going to try and try and break something. Um, yeah, watch, watch me make a huge mess. All right, so let's get this robot on a funny angle. If I were to use a normal offset, not the tool offset, everything is going to be in right angles, X, Y, Z. And this robot's going to be going up and down uh, on my approach. But if I use a tool offset and teach my position like this, watch how cool this works. Let's touch up my point, shift record. So now this is where I want my robot going is somewhere kind of toward the corner, still using my tool offsets. Let's play this thing. Obviously, it's going to go home first. Don't worry about that. All right, here we go. The robot changes its orientation. Oh, <laughs> you guys, if it doesn't bite you, then you haven't been in robots long enough. I set all my uh, Zs to be negative again, and I'm really glad that I did that because it shows you that even with 15 and a half years experience, these things happen. This is why RoboGuide is helpful. Negative 100. Let's try this again. I promise I have not started in on the green beer yet. Here we go. Approach. 100 in and out. Look at that beautiful path that it makes. The robot actually, let's see if I can turn this, comes in onto its angle that you need for the approach. And with a Z offset, in the tool, it comes in and out at the exact angle that you need the tool to go in. If you were to try and do that with a world offset uh, or a user frame offset, just, you know, the standard offset, you'd probably need some combination of an X and a Z, right? Because X is facing forward and Z, so it'd be you know, a little bit in X and a little bit in Z. It'd be two elements instead of just one. So you get some really clean and useful flexibility running the robot with tool offsets. Look at that. The robot orients itself, gets perfect, straight into the corner, straight out of the corner, orients itself back home. Beautiful. Okay. Now, let's take this a step further again, because that's what we like to do. Um... I am going to reteach my destination position, shift record, okay, normal position here. I'm going to leave this offset alone. I'm going to leave it at negative so that it actually behaves and I quit crashing things. Uh, but I'm going to just give it a little love note, tool offset, okay. Now, let's call this one frame offset. Let's give it a value of negative 100 in the X. What am I concocting, guys? What is going to happen with a negative 100 in the X direction of world frame? Well, here's your robot gang sign here. Right hand rule, uh, index finger, uh, middle finger, thumb. Uh, if we go minus 100, it's going to send the robot 100 millimeters this way. Why would anyone do that? Well, I can actually combine offsets. Offset PR4. Let's go down here, add it to this one as well. Offset PR4. So now look at line 7 is actually three lines long. Uh, I'm moving to the tray with my tool offset of Z negative 100, which goes up. And I'm also moving it world offset X negative 100. I'm going to put it here too. You're going to see why. 
just that. Let's run this thing. Let's uh, get this guy back at home. Get it on screen. All right, here we go. And play. So without changing my tray one top position, I've now got the robot into a different box just by telling it a frame offset of negative 100. If I go in there and change that, let's make it negative 200 and play this code. Play. Look at this. I'm starting to reach different places on the tray with only one taut position. How cool is this? Technically two. I have a home position and a tray position and I'm already reaching other things. Well, how can I use this to my advantage? This is how we can really start making code very, very professional. All right, I'm going to insert some blank lines of code. I'm going to start here. I'm going to drop in a for loop for register one, one, two, three. So I'm setting up a loop for r equals 1 to 3. Come down here, end 4. So I've got my for loop. There's 4, there's end 4. So everything in between, oh, it helps if I actually put that in the right spot, though. Let's uh, cut that, put it here. All right. So everything in between the 4 and end 4 is going to happen three times. 1, 2, 3. Let's insert some more logic. I can say registers. And maybe this is something that you've seen or not seen, but in my registers, I can do register math. I can say I want to take PR4 element 1. Let's talk about that in just a second. Um, and I'm going to do that again here too. PR4 element 1. When you look at position registers, uh, we have six elements in there, and they're in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. X, Y, Z, y'all pitch roll. So I'm taking this line of code, and I'm modifying PR4 element one. And what I'm going to do with this bad boy is say, take yourself and subtract 100 millimeters. So if I start this out at all zeros, there's no offsets. I'm going to add 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to my tray. And then when I get to this line of code, I'm going to subtract 100, then run again, then subtract 100, then run again. Let's see what happens. Let's see how, how this code works. Fingers crossed, right? First position, second position, third position. So now I have this sleek, sexy little chunk of code that literally has two top positions. I have a home and a tray and a for loop and nothing else going on other than one line of math where I am decrementing my offset and applying that offset to my code and look at boom, boom, boom. Guys, this is the secret sauce of how we do palletizing. There is nothing more fancy or special than this. When you see a robot doing machine tending and picking parts out of an array and, and loading a lathe or lo loading a CNC, this is what's happening in the background. It's, it's not black box magic. It is offset mathematics. So now you've seen tool offsets. You've seen standard offsets uh, or what we would call a frame offset. Uh, let's show you another neat trick to keep your code clean and modular and pretty and lovely. I'm going to delete some of the work that I've just done here real quick just to uh, tidy up. I'm going to go in here and say no option and no option. Just going to really undo all the stuff we just did. No option, no option, no option. Okay. If you find yourself using the same offset uh, over and over and over throughout your code. Because um, keep in mind, a lot of people have tons of different offsets. Maybe they want some that are 100, some that are 25, some that are 50, some that are 
combinations of X and Z and come in on angles and they have tons of offsets. Well, some people only have one. All right, go above the tray, go down to the tray. If you're going to do that, you can actually opt to kind of clean things up a little bit. And what I do when, when I want to clean things up is I'll put a little piece of header code up at the top and I will say instructions and I have this section here for offsets or this section for tool offsets. Uh, doesn't matter which one we do first. It's going to end up the same. Let's do tool offset. Tool offset condition. I'm going to click that and it's going to say what condition do you want? I want the PR3. So now you can see I can put it right in my header of the of program patties that, hey, I'm using this frame, this tool, this speed. Oh, and by the way, I'm using uh, tool offset condition PR3 for all my work. Well, then what I can do is anywhere I want that to, to be, I can just say choice tool offset. Go down here, choice tool offset. So now instead of having to define every single offset PR, offset PR, offset PR throughout all my code, I can just globally define it at the top and say, hey, anywhere that I'm using a tool offset, just use PR3. And then I can just say tool offset, tool offset. So let's um, let's take a look at that and, and see how this guy plays and make sure that it does exactly what I'm thinking it should do. Play. Remember, this is only one loop. Above, down to it, back up, and back home. So it works exactly the same, but now, you know, when you get those codes that are, you know, 50 or 100 lines long, you don't have PRs floating all over the place. You can keep things really, really clean and beautiful. So, um, guys, that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments section. Uh, if you got topics that you'd like covered, put them in. I've got a bunch I got to get to, but I, I appreciate everything you guys are asking. Please keep it coming. Um, if you go out tonight, uh, be safe. Call an Uber. And uh, if you're watching this tomorrow on Thursday, hopefully my voice didn't hurt your hangover. Have a great one, guys, and always remember to have fun coding.